Hi, it's your girl Black Barbie and I'm alongside Shelly, Arlene, Michelle, and Mackenzie. And this is Uncensored. Uncensored. This is unbiased talk by intelligent, opinionated women engaging in thought-provoking, riveting conversations with incredible, incredible guests. News, views, and interviews all collide right here on Uncensored. Uncensored. This is the social circle where we'll be talking about trending topics. This is also brought to you by Runway the Salon Inc. So I know everybody must have seen the Gully Bop video that went out with Miss Chin. Yes. What's your take on it, Ali? Well, I just learned that Gully Bop was a real person. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. No, I've heard the name, but I had no idea until I went to Jamaica last week. And I realized it was an actual person. And he actually has music out. Yes. So, so when I learned about the Miss Chin and, you know, my friends were talking about it and trying to fill me in. And my take on it is, I thought Miss Chin never really, I think she took him clean, clean up and it was all about if he makes money, she gets it. That's what I think because I really th don't think she really wanted it. Wait, after all, and here's my take on this. I can't be with a man who has no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kiss him up and all that and say, Mommy, this is my man. So I think somewhere along the line, even if she had an ulterior motive to get famous from him, somewhere along the line, she must have cared about him. Yeah, she I fell in so. love. She had to fall in love with him. But I think, the, I think the, to me, the motive, just like you said, why with a guy that has no teeth or whatever? Come from the gully? <laughs> and it's okay coming from the gully, but it's one who, it's not where you're from sometimes, it's where you go and where, where you are. are. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, I think she thought he would have been so grateful that she, you know, he would she, told her to pay her. But my, my issue is, I feel like uh, people, you know, is looking at it as, you know, Shauna Chin is the one who made Gully Pop sandwich, which is far from the truth. It was somebody who videoed him. And that video actually went viral and Shauna Chin just stepped in after and tried to basically capitalize on what she know will be a success, which he was. So I don't feel like she did it even though people is trying to give her credit. No, she just saw something and run with it because she was also affiliated with the whole Vibes Cartel camp, like promoting Tommy Lee and all that kind of good stuff. However, she just she's just a capitalist. That's all she was. Yes, I think she fell in love, you know, somewhere along the line because I can't believe nobody could kiss or suck somebody's tongue out the way she does. Really? Yeah. You know, her, her, her emotion. <laughs> I just don't believe any of it. I think it's like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. It shouldn't be on the news and it's, I mean, look at the guy. Well, I mean, we he love him tricks. because he, 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 he symbolized, he he's, he's, yeah, but he symbolized, he symbolized not giving up, keeping hope alive, like, keep, don't Rats kill your dreams mm -hmm. just because you may reach a certain age because success can reach you when it's your time and he motivates people and I think, I think he is, he's a great story, he's something that I could look up to, you come from the gully having nothing you know, almost went crazy, maybe on drugs, and then now you're touring the world. You're seeing places that you never dreamt you'd ever be, come to America. I mean, he basically defied all the odds. And I think he, is a, he's, he has a great story. It's sad the way it's playing out right now because, of course, we were expecting that she was really there for love and it would be good. But if we actually follow the story and listen, she said um, on a few interviews that, because he always brought her to the bank with him because he didn't know how to use his card that's and he wasn't doing it anymore i feel like she felt insecure and then started to look at him a different way say oh he's learning how to do things now on his own he don't need me and then she just built up this whole facade and just started to try to find a way how she could hold on to it or you know say that oh you don't need me no more it's time for me to like go and let me keep something let me get something out of this and i think that's just the basis of what she did. I am so confused. Am I the only one finding something really wrong with yeah, this picture? I'm, 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 I'm so confused. Because my take on this is, if she loved him, loved, she's going to love him whether he has teeth or no teeth. <laughs> she's going to love him whether he has money or no money. 
And whether he's taking her to the bank or not taking her to the bank anymore, that shouldn't change her feelings. But that's if she had that she had true feelings. If she really was in love with him and her intention was good, it wouldn't change her feelings. It wouldn't bring us to this point that we are at right now because she sings song where she said she will never leave him. But she was, you know, she put that out there. So why is it now it's an issue where you say that you're not together anymore and he's stealing stuff from out his own home? How can a person steal their own things? But what I heard while I was there is that she started buying and she realized that he was acting out, she started buying two of everything, a TV for the house and one for herself, a TV, a fridge. And who does that She's, when you're in love? This is what I'm saying. <laughs> so I'm saying it's all about money because that's the conversation in Jamaica. But you see, the thing is, this is what she said, and it could be that she was creating a nest for herself in the sense that she's saying that she was being abused. After a certain time, he was getting very physical, physical with her, and he was also getting verbal with her, and she couldn't take it. But shouldn't she be ashamed of herself? In the first place, to be involved with somebody that looked like that and put his hand on her. she love? It doesn't matter. Don't tell me how it doesn't matter. She if he loves somebody, she she did not love her. Her. Yeah. her motive was simple as this: take this horrible-looking guy from the ghetto with no teeth, or from the Grand Spen Gully, wherever he's from. Make him in, you know, when she saw that thing Just went back, you know, clean him, him up, and he's did. going to be ever so grateful, and they would live, she 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 the money part backfired. She just didn't get it. All right, so so right now, basically, they're both benefiting from this whole event that transpired, which we could say kudos and congratulations to Gullibop and Shin. She has a record deal now. She's doing her own music, and Gullibop has two hits from it. Blessings, of course, and Delilah. Delilah. So it's it's really good for them. But we say congratulations, Gullibop and, and Shana Shin. Do your thing. But right now, we're going to move it right along, and we're going to get on Dexter now. Uh, his new pictures that got leaked. Did anybody see the pictures? No. I didn't see, but I can. He, he was blessed, me. ladies. He was really Again, blessed. Again, I have no idea who Dexter. That's Dexter Dapp. That is. He's a Jamaican dancehall artist, of course, that got his big break with his great international hit 7-Eleven. Um, basically, he's telling the females, if you have 10 man, yeah, in the business, you know, he wants you same way. And also Jealous Over um, featuring Tiffa. So he definitely got his break. Everybody's loving him. He is an eye candy, without a doubt. His eyes are gorgeous. And of course, he is from Jamaica. But right now, he's definitely on a high in his career. And on his birthday, there is a European, what they call her, the groupie of the industry because she has been affiliated with Bomb to Kill a few other Jamaican well-renowned artists. And she recently leaked about three pictures with Dexter Dock showing his good private stuff. And basically she was trying to embarrass him because there's a picture where she was trying to pull up, I think, a female underwear That's on yeah. him. Yeah, while he was laying on bed, but he wasn't awake in any of the pictures, so of course, you know, she definitely did that for revenge. But she's known for, from what I read, she's known for doing these kind of things with other dancehall artists. But yeah. all I care about is, how was it? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. I, I felt like it backfired because now every female wants to see wants to to see to 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 Yes. Okay, so I'm going to have to go. Look him up. But yeah. we, we know how um, these pictures leak <laughs> normally affects their career. Right. Just make it better. But normally in the Jamaican community, it wouldn't. It kind of brings shame on the artist. That's more like an American uh, way that, you know, one support a, a safe this, go out. Isn't this a 21st century though? Well, we're, it's changing, but I could tell you if that picture was, he wasn't like, you know, well in it wouldn't have worked, you know? But it definitely worked for him. And like I said, I feel like it boosted. Now the girls really will be tearing. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Will he be able to keep his clothes on when he's at these shows? Because these females are already tagging on him, and then now to know that that's in there, they're gonna be smacking well, my head. Go next to that. <laughs> <laughs>
definitely like it. But uh, I, you guys just need to check it out and check out the picture on the internet because it definitely circulates. As Big up yourself, as, Dexter. As soon as I get up. Yes. <laughs> all the way, all right. So, you know, the female, she's jealous over. Yeah, in good stuff. But let's move it right along. Let's talk about Faye and Lion. Did you guys see the video that went viral? She was talking about how there's no support for the soca music. I know you were, you know, in that area. What do you felt about that? For me, big up fair lines if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what she was said what she said was taken out of context. She was at a concert and anyone who watches or knows Fair and Lion, she speaks her mind on the spot. And she's very aggressive when she's ready. And in the video, she's very aggressive, telling people they could kiss her behind if they don't appreciate what she had to say. Um, it's an ongoing battle in the soca scene. There's power soca. There's so many different genres of soca that it, it for me, I think it's getting out of hand because you can't market the music that way. You have pop soca, raga soca, groovy soca, now Afro soca, and I thought the whole purpose of soca music was because of the derivative, having African music derived with calypso to make soca. So now you have Afro soca, kind of it's it's redundant if you have, have to ask me that. And I think the point that she's making that people are not supportive enough. Yes, power soca. In most cases, it's jump and wave and drink your rum and enjoy and chipping down the road. But that's the essence of carnival. Carnival is having fun. Whereas, let's say a groovy soca is more, or a raga soca, it's more about telling a story of love or uh, my girlfriend leaving me, so it's a horn, a tune, something to that effect. But um, the point that she's making is that there's not enough support within the industry. And I think when I was reading a reggae, dance hall reggae has the same problem, or is it conscious reggae? I'm not too sure. I'm too familiar with it because I'm still reading up on it. Where I did see a couple of artists say conscious reggae is dying out and more dance hall music is becoming more popular. So, but if you want to make a comparison, you could look at dance hall music versus conscious reggae. And you could say calypso versus soca in the sense that power soca is dying out. Most artists want to get that longevity and they want to get recognized internationally. So they cling to a groovy soca or a raga soca because it tells more of a story and you could move over into another genre such as pop or whatever the case may be. So my question is, I'm, I'm curious, is it that they're trying to have different genres within the soca and there's not, they're not accepting that you know, there could be a division, like they want it to be one soca? Like, oh, we have reggae and dance all in Jamaica. What is it that... I think what it is, is everybody's trying issue. to make a quick million or get famous, get famous as quickly as possible. So they come up with these different genres to get themselves out there in that sense. You have power soca, which is the initial essence of carnival, like I said before, where you have... That's the, the main road music. When you get your road march, it comes from that power soca. That's where you get that vibe, with that vibrance, and you want to move down the road. Whereas the groovy soca can do that too. Don't get me wrong, groovy soca can do it, but it doesn't have that instance as to what they say power soca is. If you leave it up to me, soca is soca. I'm not giving you a power soca, groovy soca, apple. No, soca is soca. We're going to market soca to the best of our ability. Every island has its own style. In, in Dominica, you have bouillon music. In Grenada, you have jab jab. In Trinidad, you have soca. In, in Barbados and St. Vincent, you have raga soca. So it, it all depends on where you come from. It's all a fusion. Her point being that we're losing that essence. We're not putting that support back. Trinidad Carnival, Trinidad music this year alone, most of the hits came from the small islands as they like to label it. And the small islands being Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and all the other islands that don't have a 1.2 million population. So okay. that's where the essence of that came from. Um, I think it's a bias. And where she's coming from, she just wants people to know you have to support your own, you have to support your people. If we're not supporting power soca, it's going to die. People say it's dying already. So if you let it die, then we lose the essence of what carnival is. But so couldn't it just be the trend in like whatever song is popular? And I was going to say, wouldn't it also be the creativity? Yeah. Because if there's not creative, what was the song? There's power soca, groovy, and rock. Okay, if there was, the one that's dying, I'm sorry, the one that's dying. Power soca. So, if, if power soca is dying, and it means so much, then maybe they should be creating more power soca. I mean, I don't think it would be fair for the other genres to, you know, people. To be. 
labeled oh this all these genres what about if if you're interested in power soca and other persons and artists who are then they need to create more music and music okay. that wants people to be to dance dance you know yeah. and it's being done it's just that trinidad trinidad itself wasn't or doesn't have that much power soca Trinidadians themselves who are creating soca music, it's more groovy music that they created. So so what would um Marshall Montana, what would his music be? This year called? alone he came out with more EDM songs. His songs sounded more like EDM as opposed to our typical power soca. Thing. So so don't you feel like an artist should at least get the freedom to be creative yeah, to with their music? Right. And I feel an like artist they... should here's my take on it. I feel an artist should be creative. I feel e music, music evolves all the time. Don't yes. get me wrong. Music always evolves. And that was something like you're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what like, I'm getting. <laughs> no, I feel like, and this is my point. It's like dance hall. The whole, the whole thing with dance hall music, you have the, the, the attire, you have the dance hall queen where she represents the, tip, the new dance moves and she has her costume and all of that. With power soca or soca in general, the music is supposed to vibrate you, it's supposed to make you move and say, yo, I have to play mass, I have to buy that ticket to go down to Trinidad or Grenada or St. Vincent. And if it's not giving you that inspiration to do that, then it comes like you have a, a problem. Well, clearly dance all is less expensive because all you need is a pair of shorts. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> right. me, you can just dance. Yes. You know what I'm wearing is good. Yeah. You see, also the level of where reggae music and dancehall music is as opposed to soca and calypso is two different levels you guys have that international market whereas we're trying to capture that international market get that grammy you're on that plateau where you're being recognized Nine, yeah. nominated for reggae music soca music is still catching its identity and i think when you have all these different genres you lose the essence of what you stand for i would disagree with that because if you think about reggae in the essence when it you know maybe 20 years ago we would always think of the conscious reggae and uh and and Bob Marley Marley Marley. Marley. but if you look at no beanie man is dancer even though he has a conscious side and he has gotten a grammy yeah. so but you started yeah, out dancing yes, and yes, then you got his conscious side it's so it's it's so you i'm sorry you know based on all <laughs> Me and Arlene, let me talk to Arlene, um, outside that we are not aware of what's going on in the music, but you would at least think that we would want it to evolve. Yes. And yes, not yeah. be stuck in a box. Yeah. Because for me, so when I think that's soca like. is from primary school and you dance feeling hot, hot, hot. Still, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's so for me. You're yeah. yeah. in yes. primary school yes. and these performances, yes. and yes. you come out feeling hot, 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 hot in the, in the, in the Because you yourself, who you know, is a part of that culture and know the soca music, know the different genres. Because I didn't know, and you're just educating me on it right now. Everybody on the outside just look at it when they hear the music and just sing soca. Exactly. You know, you know what I mean? My niece is 24 years old and to this year, and you cannot play it around. She said, "Oh my God, I can't stand it. It's just the same boom, 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 the beat, the beat, boom, boom, and she just does not it's want not, to hear it. It's yeah. different. The beat, the, 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 yeah, because what she never changes. Change. Each island has their own sound. With I guess you can say if you listen to the music, you can identify. All right, that's from Dominica. That's from Haiti. Or <laughs> the only thing so I can tell is Conga from Haiti. That's mm -hmm. the only difference, and because it's, mm -hmm. it's a slower beat, that's the only thing. Mm -hmm. I think I can tell a little difference, and also in the music, in in how they articulate the ver the words, you can hear a little bit of difference. But if you say to me which island it is, I have mm -hmm. no clue. I would just say, you know, when you get a chance, if you're not familiar with it, then Google what groovy soca is, raga soca is, what soca is, and power soca is, versus calypso, and, you know, get the gist of that, and you're free to and comment, send us a message, <laughs> send me a message, shandy underscore sweet on Instagram, <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> Thanks for the education, because to me, yes. soca was just soca. soca. Yes. <laughs> I must say.
<laughs> All right, so <laughs> let's move it right along and let's talk about Justone. Who knows Justone, the hardest Justone right now? Because oh, she's yeah. being recognized on as Billboard. reggae, yes, on the Billboard charts as a reggae artist of the year. Like, she's basically taken a stance where we like our own Jamaican artists to actually be in the place of. So, Everybody is voicing their opinion. I know personally, um, Could you, you know, a little background first. Yeah, well, well, where well, is she, she from? Well, I'm England, England, right? England, England, yeah, England. yeah, yeah. And basically, what happened is, you know, since that whole post of her being put in that position for reggae music with all our reggae artists that we have, you know, there was a comment that was made uh, by Caribbean media that I believe, um, you know, she failed to get the recognition that she needed for it. She did at a few celebrities including Bounty Killer that was in it um, amongst many other prestigious artists and of course he retweeted of course on Instagram which is, we, we definitely commend him for because that was definitely a good thing that he did because it brought awareness because he has such a bigger uh, media platform however he failed to give credit where it's due and of course in the newspaper they talk about it but I do believe um, that you know our own artists should definitely get the recognition they put great music out there but nobody is like you know recognizing them it's like if we the authentic jamaican is doing it it's not good enough but once you know somebody that has more popularity that's from a different culture they get more recognition they benefit they basically reap in or benefits which i think is like so wrong right now but i was reading what bounty said and in the sense that he feels that exactly what you just said, Jamaica, when will the Jamaican government step in and put a stance and say, look, this is our music, we're going to market it and make money off of it rather than have somebody else from the outside benefit from it. He brought up, because first I thought it was we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna We're going to correct that because he did not say that. Uh -huh. That was by Caribbean Media. Okay. He just retweeted what she said. So that was her okay. words. So, because initially when I first read it, I thought it was a race issue. Mm -hmm. But then he brought up, or Caribbean Media brought up, Eddie Murphy, who also benefit Mm -hmm. from the reggae yes, genre and a couple of other artists as well mm -hmm. that have benefit from it. So in a sense, if it's music, why should it just be Jamaica that gets... Yes, but there's still a lack of support that is going for our reggae, for our community, where that's where we say that... You know how uh, basically with music, there's a lot of royalties that's being, um, you know, received by artists, different people, but of course our own Jamaican people, they're not reaping it. Like the, the, the not industry, registered. right, but the industry, and that's the thing, that's why I say the Jamaican government to step in the same way how they could step into Jamaica and they came and they built a lot of the radio stations for playing American music. It should be the same thing, vice versa. And but it's not well, I, I disagree with that because if the artists, is, if the artists, feel as if they're not being rewarded based on their work. They need to form together and, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Create the, um, like here in the United States where they have the pub publishers' rights and all those organizations. But that's, that's, that's each that's individual, one of the issues that Jamaican musicians have had over the years, they want to do it all themselves. Okay. Get a lawyer. That's what entertainment lawyers are there for. Mm -hmm. And if there's lots of good one out there. They're losing a lot of money. They have always been losing a lot of money. And even in today, the 21st century, when everybody can do for themselves, they're still losing tons of money. Right. Yeah, Just but that, get that's, a lawyer. But that's where they're saying, Same. like, to have Jamaica, the Jamaica, the, Jamaica the government. It's not the government. They need to step. It it's but at the same right. time, it's something that's yeah, coming yeah, from yeah, your no, country. No, no, it's no, not it's capitalist. Each oh, okay, all right. So let, let me let me bring it back to this note. Now Jamaica, because you're saying that that's not Jamaica's business. Jamaica now is um, going to capitalize on anyone that does the jerk. The same way how they could actually, what you consider copyright, that when they do the jerk seasoning and all that kind of stuff and do it, now they have to pay Jamaica for it. If any company decides to do it, it's the same thing. But right, music. music came out of Africa, so you can't say it's Jamaican. Well, uh, we, it, I never heard it, that one before. Are, it's an African, right? it's an African thing. That's the first time I'm hearing it. I never heard that before. It's, it's I, I only heard that. I, I never heard that before. But that's all of our 
music come out of Africa? N not unless yeah. what, right from now, it did but not in the right. Right. It did right. not come so from there. So we can't there. say reggae is just Jamaican. You have reggae. Well, where, where was you have reggae? No, but that is a, Spanish. That, no, no, that no, reggae is was just born, born in, in Jamaica. Jamaica. It is just the beats came from the African job. The reggae beats. That's no, 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 no. The beats came from the African drum and Jamaicans developed that and that's how it they developed the reggae. sound they right. developed okay. the sound and it was actually the way how reggae actually came about I forgot the name of the artist who was actually um, playing like they recorded and the the rhythm actually went slow and because of how slow it went that's how the birth of reggae came about where the way how the beat sound and that's how it started. But it started from so Jamaica. Does this mean that nobody, no other country or nobody else should benefit from it? Nobody is saying that, but at the same time, it should be a market that benefit the island of Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to wrap this up. <laughs> and of course, this was our community conference. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But right now, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. So just keep where you got it. This is Uncensored. I want an avenue D Cedilla. Yeah, all the girls I love the phone thing, I love the magla. Just come check up on the corner. I want me to tell you that the number is 718 552 2050. Member straight up, don't miss it. 718 552 2050. I the number that for the link. I'm going to tell you, say, of 5003 Avenue D. Yo, yeah. Phone you a fix on the run, come see we. Phone you a fix on the run, come see Welcome back. Today our in-studio guest is the Honorable Erwin Clare, founder of the Caribbean Immigrant Services and a man that wears several hats, which we'll be discussing today. Our guest now is Erwin Clare, my friend. How are you, Erwin? Quite well, first of all, let me say it's indeed a uh, distinct honor and privilege to be here on Uncensored. I'm not certain what that means, but we're going to find out soon, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. But it's great being here. Yes. Of course, we're here to talk about some uh, thought-provoking events that take place, of course, mm -hmm. in our Caribbean community. And we know that you are uh, very known in our area with that expertise. So. Not, not about the thoughts, not about the things, things that happen. Things that happen, yes. Not so, initiating them. No, oh, okay. definitely you would not. <laughs> but of course, uh, we know that you are uh, president for the CEO, basically, of Team Jamaica Big Club. So just for our viewers' sake, could you inform them just a little bit about that if they're not familiar with it? Sure. Um, first, first of all, let me say it's, a, it's, it's always an honor to, to, to be amongst our people and deliver information that is pertinent to our community. It's very important that we do that. And, and the question you asked about Team Jamaica, because one of the say what the heck is Bicker, right? Yes. Um, it's a vernacular for food. Um, um, a typical countryman come from the best parish in Jamaica, and we need not debate that on this um, on yeah. and where And where is that? That's what I'm talking about. It's an uncensored chat we're going to have here. It is actually said that in the parish of Marcus Garvey, Bob Marley, Marijuana, and me. You know, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so, so back then, you know, you know, for a person from a rural area, um, Bickley is a commonality for us as it relates to food. Um, when we migrated here to the United States several years ago, I, I was very much interested in track and field. And uh, participate with my friends from Jamaica College, that is a powerhouse in track and field. We go to the Pendleys on a yearly basis. We would beg to differ about that powerhouse. Yes, yes. <laughs> Campbell, I imagine, is a spring factory in terminology, yes. not necessarily an application. Yes. But the point here is that. <laughs> oh, that was very dear to my heart. <laughs> back, back then, um, you know, we would go down and see these athletes perform at the Pendleys. The question came up as to whether or not there's something we do to assist. Okay. Make a long story short, being president of Jamaica Progress League at that, at that time, the Progressive League had an event that catered to our athletes, but it was like a feast for dead people. What I mean by that, it took place after the event. You actually need the nourishment before, be, before and during, right? right? And so we were able to find some ways to do that. We came back and um, struck up a dialogue, a relationship with the Honorable, I should say, Dr. Uh, Vincent Hussain O.J., um, who is the proprietor and CEO of Caribbean Food and Life, and we struck a relationship with him for the past 22 years, which is a foundation where we now set up a, a massive tent of I've that seen it. That provides means for our Jamaican athletes and our Caribbean athletes. So it's now not just for Jamaican athletes, but we 
involve our Caribbean brothers and sisters, which are meals, transportation, accommodation, and a safe environment for people to think. And when you say meal, it's meals, it's actually meals, because I think they are provided three meals. Yeah, and, and, and cooked on set. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I tasted some of it. Although she did easy. not participate on the track. <laughs> she did eat. Yes. <laughs> Ergood will tell you, I find my way in. Mm -hmm. And um, incidentally, you know, ladies, that's one of the challenges we have to keep folks like my friend here um, from participating in the goodies for the kids. No, 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 no kidding. It has become a, a, a kind of cause, wouldn't you say? A, yes. a melting pot where persons come to the Penn Base who are real track fans, supportive of our teams in the Caribbean, will come in with their meeting spot. Yes, it is. So to switch gears a little bit, could you please tell me what is the Jamaica Progressive League? Okay. Interesting, and I'm glad you brought it up because it's part of our history which uh, unfortunately is, is dying a slow death. The Jamaica Progressive League is one of the oldest Jamaican organizations in the United States. And it was it was um, it was founded back in 1936 and the forerunner, I should say, the, the the whole independence and self movement, self government movement for Jamaica actually has its genesis right here in Harlem, in New York. It was Jamaicans here who sat down and decided it was now time that they started to put in place the mechanisms for, for um, adult suffrage, for the whole movement of independence, and sat right here. And hence the Jamaica Progressive League. It was that one shot. In fact, up to 1978, the Jamaica Progressive League was the only commer black commercial landlord in Midtown Manhattan, whereby they owned the building, I think it was at 57th near 5th Avenue. All right. It was where Bob Marley first played when he came to the United States. It was where the independence balls of the era used to take place. Um, it was that area, it was that, what we call it, organization for all Jamaicans. Over the years, of course, they've lost this bus too. So is that, does that have also to do with what was called the Jamaican Union? That, that would have been part of it. it you, you then had what's called the Jamaican Benevolent Associations and stuff like that. All those organizations, but the Progressive League was the foundation organization, you know, was the organization from whence the, that Jamaicans were looking forward to, to participating in. And um, it is also the parent organization of the People's National Party, the National Workers' Union, encouraging the formation of the Jamaican Labour Party. And even today, some of these um, politicians on both sides of the islands in Jamaica found their genesis in the publicity. Okay, I know I'm so happy, but I have a couple more questions because I was reading about you and maybe it's my loss, but until Kelly mentioned, I have never heard of you. That's no problem. And I want to know if there's so much, how is it that I've never heard, heard of? of? And the, and that's is there something wrong with the marketing or? No, 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 no. You see, you must remember that we live in a society where we come here for varying reasons. Um, we, but at the center of it all is that we're here to better the lives of our children. Exactly. Right? That's yes. foundation, yes. right? Yes. It is important that our children do better than we do. With that being said, we have had to take different avenues. You know, my mother once said to me that it is okay to shovel SHIT because at the end of the day, you'll own the SHIT house. What does that mean? Sacrifices. So you find that some people will leave Jamaica who were normally socialized. And they come to the United States and they have to do different things with that, those different things. And there's not illicit here, no. You're working for your family, there's nothing illicit about it. But it takes you away from your normal patterns of keeping abreast of what's taking place in Jamaica, keeping abreast of certain services. And you may have a different focus. No, but I do keep abreast of no, what's happening. But I'm sharing you, I'm coming around to you. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, you provide an awesome, <laughs> very important service. Because we're and a large just service. as though I don't know, there may be people who really need yes, these services. Yes. And that is true. That does not know about it. That is true. And that's what keeps, that's why I'm uncensored. Sir, yes, exactly. you have that platform. <laughs> you see? And that's why these situations are so critical because must remember, you know, in the United States, we do not own a radio station. We do not own a TV platform. These are the, 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 the most, um, what do you say, no, aggressive means yeah. of communication. Yeah. In Jamaica, you're going to zone it. Let's, let's go back to our time. We're going to zone it to JBC or RGR. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you have a plethora of radio talk programs. 
but there are programs generated towards that Jamaican community. Here in the States, ABC, NBC is not carrying your news. It's not carrying your news. We're, 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 we're from that perspective. So this is groups like these. What is happening here now becomes so critical, and there's not sufficient. But we work with what we have one step at a time. There are many others who are doing fantastic work out there that you and I don't even are aware of. But it is making the environment in the And it's true. Uh, <coughs> Through, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Through uh, mechanisms, yeah, mechanisms, mechanisms like this, yes, yeah, you know, know, that this information uh, is released. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And having an earlier conversation with you, uh, I feel like you and I, a lot of times, they start, you know, talking to Barbie and Shandy. Shandy I'm sorry, <laughs> talking to Barbie and Shandy. We are almost as if we're on the outside looking in, and it's, that's sad, just as what you said. When we were in Jamaica, we would be maybe on top of everything. But you here, mean, you know, we're in everybody's business. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but not necessarily, I know, but not necessarily but in everybody's business, but, but we're in these silos. Right, right, and right. we are so focused on the silos, and for me, maybe my silo is my family, my environment, how can I do better? And not necessarily the you know, what else is going on in the community. But let me ask you this though, how many people really know the persons who live beside me their names and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I guess that yeah. but when you talk about like we're living in our own silos or I am totally interested and mm -hmm. active in my Jamaican community. Mm -hmm. I just do it in Jamaica. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want a way to do it here. It's just that I could never get the information. All right. Well, I'll tell you where it starts now. This is what, uh, for the benefit of our audience, because you rightfully say there, we take things for granted too many times. Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a Jamaican council that represents, that is a Jamaican base for the government of people here in the United States. The council is located at 767 Third Avenue, where you will get your passport and find out information about Jamaica. Supplementing that, you have what is called the Jamaican diaspora, which is an opportunity for That's Jamaicans so in the diaspora yeah. to come together. But check this out now. We live in a world today where you gotta appreciate this. To find out something, you have to go out and get it. Yes. Nobody comes to you yeah. and spoon feeds yeah. you anymore. Yeah. That's yeah. just the world we live in. If it's yes. important to you, you have to go out. No, but you go out and get it because right. I tried reaching the new president. Oh. The diaspora. Okay. I've left three messages so far. We can help you correct that. All right. And um, you know, it is sometimes you you you, you also have to understand another another inhibitor. Not searching for excuses there because I've been there, and people have made that criticism of me too. And that is, it's always it's a voluntary situation. Right. There is no infrastructure where you say, well, somebody works on this night, uh, 24, 24 hours, 365 days. Although sometimes I feel I do that but we can never cover all the bases. It is still voluntary. We, we're still in a transitionary mode where we have to find that, that, that balance one, but also that mechanism that seeks to support to what you just said, because you're absolutely correct. There are many people out there who we should be reaching who we are not reaching. How do we devise that opportunity to do so? And again, it comes back to situation like this. It's, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some time, but we have to be committed to it. Do you have a social media account, Instagram, Personally? Facebook, Personally? that people can reach if they need to? Oh, yes, yeah. Team Jamaica Mako has that. Um, that is something you know, we, we deal with, with young people. So we have a website, teamjamaicamako.com. Um, and, and of course, the, the, the various Facebook sites are out there. So when Team Jamaica Mako comes up, we are, we, it's, a, it's a household word within the athletic fraternity. You know, but the limitation of that is based on what Arlene said. Yeah. Her being a Jamaican and out there, she has never even heard of this. Mm. But have you been to... No, 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 no. What's going on in Jamaica? What's going on in Jamaica? Arden. One of the, uh, the academically acclaimed schools in Jamaica. They do have a track team that comes to the Penn That means you're not supporting them coming to the Penn <laughs> That's not what I'm mean. I'll put you on the spot. But yeah. I'm, I'm just saying yeah. though, what these are things? Did you know that you're a Rhodes Scholar in New York recently? Ah, the top road scholar is from Arden. She was in New York recently celebrated in all the newspapers. Mm -hmm. So Arlene, I'm just saying there again. And you could also approach me to what someone from my school, but I don't know, but these are things that just fall in the crack. Yeah. It's happening. Mm -hmm. Get in touch with Dave Rodney. And you be connected. And who is Dave Rodney? 
Well, once she does her plug on, once you make all the information, yeah. and then you'll Okay, so yeah. let's, um, my next expensive. question is, um, okay, so the Jamaican diaspora, what is its mission and its, um, okay. and, 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 role? Yeah, role? Okay. Basically, like all if ethnic groups here in these United States, you see the power base that they have. Jamaica is one of those countries that its, it's um, remittance to Jamaica rivals tourism is upwards of 18% of GDP. Significant number, which means it hovers around $2.5 billion. It means then that we have a significant diaspora, people outside of Jamaica, that is contributing to the livelihood of the nation. It is always any country's responsibility and an objective as to how to harness that power base to, to not just have it to be an ATM for remittance purposes, exactly. but how do we now also look at what we call intellectual remittance? You would have come to the United States and garnered um, academic and professional skill sets. How do those skill sets remitted to Jamaica assist one, but also providing your path to participate in the economic progress of the nation which today, ladies, are at a zenith. And those of us in the United States must begin to find ways to get involved. The diaspora structure provides those kind of organizations and those linkages, whether through JAMPRO, the Tourist Interest, the Exports Asso Exporters Association, the Private Sectors Association. These are all the tentacles. Jamaica, for example, and the Caribbean boasts one of the most prolific healthcare professional core of people. All right, healthcare is a challenge to us in the region. So you find that the healthcare sector remits upwards of seventy-five million dollars a year in services and all that kind to Jamaica because of the type of healthcare missions. You hear of nurses and doctors going back home. That's very impacting on the nation. This is a prolific role. The same thing for education. Alumni associations, of which is a member of Union of Jamaica Alumni Associations, along with the Education Task Force also has a program as to how, it's, how it introduces the challenges taking place in, yes. in the young, in the, in the what is that, primary yes. basic school situation. So these are activities taking place as well as the economic team. Mm -hmm. And in one of your speech I was reading and you made an interesting phrase which I like, maybe you could tell us about it, where you said that the Brain drain has now become like a net gain. Yes, yes. And I didn't get to read the yeah, I stole it from, I, yeah, was, I stole it from somewhere. I thought it was fancy. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, the oh, tea you get from somewhere. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It really is. It is. It is. You see, because the fun thing is that people who, like myself, who left our country for greener pastures, are now finding ourselves that we want to go back home. And we're going back home not just to sit on a rock stone and do nothing. We want to be involved. We want to take back what we have learned here in these United States, the better part of it, of course, yeah. to, to help build our nation. Because, you know, it's one thing about when you live in the United States, you see the David and Goliath scenario plays out all the time. Yeah. Huh? Um, when, when you're in a situation where you sit back and you can see uh, our musicians play. I heard from Richard Stevens just this past week that Rihanna did a little piece from one of his tunes now gone platinum. And I'm saying to myself, Damn, it's a Jamaican yeah. involved in that thing there. Or you got penalties, you see us beating. Or you are you see, or you are you're at the, you're the Reebok Grand Prix when you say both set the world record. You say, wow, right here in New York City. I like a yard man, a man from the Caribbean. Or when Mr. Walcott from Trinidad um, got the first uh, world championship record for Jamie, you say, wow. So you say, well, you come here, you learn all these things. Why do you go back home now and help your brother and mother? As you do so. There's also an entrepreneurial aspect to it because of the opportunities to create wealth as well. So speaking about Jamaica, let's uh, change gear and talk about immigration mm. service. Mm -hmm. uh, because now they have that proposal of uh, if you commit a crime and you get deported, they're looking to deport your family member with well, you. You see, that, that's, that? that's uh, all right. the explanation that it's not really so. Okay. Um, unless the basis by which you got your immigration benefits and they went on to provide it to other family members and they have no what's called a derivative effect so it's like a dominant effect you hit one and you can it down there will be a, a, a legitimate connection okay all right um and, and one thing we want to say to our country because immigration is part of our culture yes 
we did not leave our shores because the beaches are better here. Right? We know that. We know that. We know that. We know that. And uh, for many of us who are immigration challenged, and this is a very passionate subject for me, immigration challenged. I don't use terms called my people illegal or mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yes. Immigration challenged. I want to just categorically say right now, if people are watching and listening to us right now, and you're facing immigration challenges, understand that unless you have a child who is a citizen and over 21 years old, unless you have a spouse or you're fallen over, I should say, and got married to a United States citizen, there are no other ways you can address your status right now. Mm -hmm. So anybody coming with any kind of humble jumbo things that they have this idea that something can happen. Unless there's a light shining down from you and you're that guy coming from Damascus and God was talking to you directly, you won't have to move away. But not only that, because you may have a child or you may have a spouse, but you may also have a criminal background. Well, well you see, I, 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 so again, I, I will not go to scenario here for your part here. 99% of us don't break the law. Yes. So I always try to subscribe to the 99%. Right? Otherwise, we find ourselves, and this is no disrespect to those who, for whatever reasons, may have fallen. But we also have to understand that the majority of us are not in that. Right? So when you hear, because otherwise, then you'll be subscribing to the arguments of the Trumps and all those people where somehow immigrants are here as some aliens. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. yeah. Because I dare, say, I dare say, if we should follow all the Caribbean folks off Flatbush Avenue for a day to be like a ghost right? Mm -hmm. So there's an economic battle. Well, 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 but let's not even say a Flatbush Avenue. Let's say in the businesses in, in Manhattan, because you'll be surprised sometimes you're walking in and you go to an office and there may be 10 different Caribbean persons in yeah. that office. So if the it's Caribbean, the yeah. actually, yeah. if immigrants, yeah. immigrants if period. immigrants period, because this is not just about Caribbean, if yes. immigrants was to mm -hmm. not go to work yeah. one day, yeah. 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 this true. entire economy is But sometimes yeah. it seems like our politicians <laughs> forget that. Yes. Yes. Especially, and when that really gets to the core of my heart is when it's politicians that are second generation of immigrants yes. mm. or even third generation of immigrants that is not that far but as away you mentioned Donald Trump, he but if you've listened over the years it's not i think most of the time they accept it the only person we have a problem with is mr trump mm -hmm. no, no, no no because i've no, listened that i'm sure no, that you have listened to right many now, of them right? and they say and they will come out and tell you America is built yeah, yeah, on the that's back that's of the no, That's the argument. But, but, and but, politicians have said that. Yes, but, have, but look at their actions. Yeah. Immigration is a wedge issue in this election. Mm -hmm. I'm not even certain that if and when we have another Democrat in the White House, that we'll have any passage for immigration They reform. will never fix it because they always need this to run on. All right, but you see, that's what I'm saying to you. So although they're saying that it's built on immigrants, it's, not really doing it's anything something to, to run on. They're to, always going to have this immigration it, issue. And so, if some politician try to do something, it's not going to go over well. They don't want to fix it. Can you discuss a little bit about the abuse and practices that are along with this proposal and if anything explain a little bit about this proposal that we are talking about all right i gather the, the, what we're talking about is that the the president's initiative let's go ahead, because that's the most topical issue right now um because outside of that there's no other immigration reform that would benefit everyone here in this country the the president two years ago um by executive last year by executive action um presented a situation where children born here uh, or have parents are undocumented and for some reason they are unable to adjust and there are some technical reasons for that um, that they would be qualified in essence for a work authorization which allows them to live work and be free from the threat of deportation that would impact some four to five million people we're told, a significant amount of people. It would also bring from the subterranean economy persons who have been living in the shadows. <clears throat> and in some cases contribute to the tax roll of cities in which they live in. So it's a good move for the United States. 
the day before it was supposed to be implemented, uh, federal courts in Texas, which is, of course, uh, one of the, the base for the anti-Obama uh, presidency, especially relates to immigration. They had uh, a state, got a state from, from their circuit court. The good news is that we have been told now that, and as such, it has put it on hold. Okay. All right, um, and, and the whole idea here is an executive action, which you know you've heard all the, the presidential candidates on the Republican side saying that the first day in office, they're going to undo. But they're going to undo. Obviously, obviously, their first day in office will not be in this country. <laughs> uh, let's hope so. Yeah. So, with that being said, in June, the Supreme Court has come out and said that it will have a decision on that, uh, on that uh, executive order. There are many of us in the immigration field who are very optimistic. And if the decision does come down, uh, we also recognize too that, that the mechanisms were already in place for its implementation. So it's just a matter of time, you know, short turnaround before it gets started. Because the whole idea here is to get started while it's on the watch of President oh, Barack wow. Obama. So that at a minimum, there's some relief, even though it could be short lived. You know, and then again, let's remember what a person says on a campaign trail is not necessarily so what, what he does because they want a yes. different scenario. So, so all those scenarios. So we're looking forward to that. And like I said, it would impact, according to the estimates, some 45 million persons. I, I, sorry, I'm not no. <laughs> I, I just wanted to follow up on that for one minute. Being the fact that um, President Obama studied constitutional law, I would think, and if you look at all the presidential orders that he's actually put into place, none have actually been stricken down because of that fact. Do you? I, you know, I personally am hoping, and based on your what you just said, that um, that would also fall in that line. Because it's just that we live the, 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 the political volatility that we live in kind of skews that to those guys only because the way the Supreme Court is set up that we do have a kind of on tenuous balance, balance. Yeah? Mm -hmm. and, um, and um, although he has won some very good victories yeah. recently, mm -hmm. and those guys are still musing about that, and you never know, you know, it's just like in a football game or a basketball game, some guy gets a call for a foul and the referee wants to bounce it out and call a foul the next time yeah. on the other guy, so, you know, that's part of it too, but we, we remain optimistic that this is so. But I want to touch on a piece of abuse, what our community must be cognizant of. It's to stay away from those persons. One reason is that the most money that leaves our communities through immigration services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Outside of us running to stores and shop. <laughs> <laughs> right? Leaves our community. You know, the argument is that for other ethnic groups like the Hispanic, like the Koreans, and probably even Hispanics now because of their presence polit um, politically and socially and economically, is that money stays in their community longer than it stays in color, people of color like us. You know, we run to stores elsewhere and buy, and it doesn't stay in. The same thing with immigration. A lot of our immigration providers are none are of other communities. And it's unfortunate, and I've said this, and I say this with no disrespect, but Jews go to Jews. Mm -hmm. Italians go to Italians. Hispanics go to Hispanics. Haitian speaks of Haitian because they say Creole. Other Caribbean people and our black folks go to everybody except us. My no, no, hold on. We have professionals still. And understand that, yes, we may not be the best there is, but if we do not develop a pattern of supporting ourselves and a legacy, what are we telling our children and who will support them? So I say this to folks. Understand this. Immigration services today that so much money leaves our community. Be mindful of those who come in and make all these kind For of promises. That they cannot deliver on. All right? And that's a serious situation to be mindful of. But there is a lot of times, like um, within the you know the Caribbean community, where they do come to our own, and a lot of times they become victims. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so what would you actually say to that? How would they know that they're definitely with a uh, reputable? Well, you see, it goes back down to education, uh, education, information. We, we have to have you know you, you know no man is an island. We have to have um, persons 
who, who recognize that before you go buy a house or whatever. How can you say that? Because we got in trouble with that. Before you make these kind of decisions, yeah, do your homework. Do, do, yeah, do so, so what about the ones that are not educated? No, that are trying to no, get their yeah, way church. into the wait, wait. What are you somewhere? And, and I'm speaking Because you know it's both. Like, I know. Yeah. When it comes back down to there's no excuse not to do your homework in this country today. First of all, let me tell you this. This gadget you have here, it's the most powerful thing. Yeah. How much time do you spend on it noticing what everybody else is doing? Mm -hmm. You can use this to find out information as well. But okay. may I say something to that when we talk about information? It's the same thing I was saying. I nev I've never heard of yeah. it. I mean, but first, yes. about the immigration services that our caller will offer, are they putting themselves out there? Yeah, they are. Because they are. what I will hear of mm -hmm. is Brad. Ah, no, but hold on, I can't really say that, because they are spending significant mm -hmm. money to advertise. But how else will we know? No, you know, whatever it is, that come on, let you... I was going to say, is there, okay, a lot of the other people, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. they do a lot of outreach within our community. Exactly. No, 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 because we offer free services too. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder about our people. Because here it is. Every Sunday and Saturday, 65% of our people are where? In church. In church. What has been said in church? And guess what? They offer it. You hear about Brad in church. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 the pastor. I'm just because saying to you that. So when the pastor is the one pastor talking about the information service. Yes, they are. Because yeah. right now, yeah. let me share some of you. The community. Let me share some of you guys. You guys are sitting there hearing this. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are you saying to your pastor? No, because I am saying if I've known, if I know, like, last year sometime, I took somebody to my church yeah. to talk about immigration. Mm -hmm. And she helped a lot of people there. Okay. But she's not in... African American and or you Jamaican. Find that, you no, because really, the more no. you do you because it's either her or Brad. I think there's really a stigma. There's a stigma on the <laughs> yeah, If I hear my yeah. black attorney, yeah. I will. But all I've heard of is Brad, and then I met this um, younger person. Okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you what it is. Do we join organizations? Yes. Yes. Some. some of us. Yes. Some okay. of us. <laughs> Community-based organizations, whether it be alumni associations, church organizations, your friends of from this district, giving back to the community. I mean a lot of it, but again, it's okay. not Caribbean. Well, well, uh, but you, nothing. But there you go. Oh, then, 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 let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's try it. Yeah. Because then, then, I don't think you are doing sufficient due diligence to search out Caribbean yeah. professionals. Yes. 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 That's what, that's what yes. I would have to agree with you. That's what I said. Yeah. Not even 5%. But 100%. Let me tell you, we have okay. some Caribbean officials here in this city that is running the city. Yes. At yes. all and levels. And guess what? And if you introduce me to them, I'm all in. No, but I'm saying, for you not to know no. that you are not doing yeah. proper due diligence. But then it goes back to for people who are like, yeah. are they right here? Yes. <laughs> what can we do to, to educate help. them or open their eyes a little bit? We're not saying your eyes are open, but let's just say there's not an outlet available. But there's so the way they are. Where can they go? Like, is okay, okay, media? okay. Is okay. There let me ask this. Oh, let, let's let, let's start with the basic. You read Caribbean life? Yes. yes. You read the Jamaican media? Yes. yes. Okay. I read the Jamaican media. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. But I don't read the Caribbean life. Okay. We're talking local newspapers. Mm -hmm. here. Right. And Caribbean life. I'm not promoting. I'm not promoting Caribbean life. Yeah. Caribbean. Caribbean news. Daylight. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. What's up? Yeah. Um, Where is that? <laughs> hype, hype news. <laughs> I could go on and on. And they are in our stores. You know, they're not going to find them on 5th Avenue. Yes. Unless I understand that. They're so in our stores. Okay. So maybe the issue is... Yeah. No, okay. hold on. <laughs> no, you missed what he was saying. All right, so... Well, all right, wait, wait, so. hold on one second. Let's just get this key point. Because she said about how to get the information. Yeah. And he said it's in our stores. Yes. Maybe. Or Caribbean uh, stores. What, hold on, no, hold on, hold on, no, hold on, hold on. The point I wanted to make is 
maybe she's not visiting our stores. And people and like Ireland is not, is not visiting no, our yeah. stores, that's why they're not aware. Right. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, you see, in our fairness to you, and I'm just not picking it. I think the information... It's okay, you can pick on me. Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but what it does, it helps to, to highlight right. and to showcase sure. others what, what some of the... the, 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 the more the, the, more the challenges that we yeah. have. Yeah. Uh, and you, to go back to your question, for respective Caribbean islands, your, your consulates, you go there for your passports, you know where they are, mm -hmm. all right? Um, your consulates, your church, your social organizations, um, the, 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 the newspapers you read, these are, and the radio stations you listen to. Yes, you'll hear all the other guys advertising it, but we also have local programming. I host, I host two programs on Ira Jam. I don't have any of those guys advertising in my time slot. Why? Because we have a situation here where we're promoting Caribbean-oriented business. That's just that's just it's the slant we have. Well, and I just think people should know Jam. that. Yeah, they should know that. Wait, wait, if you just know our Jam today, Jam. today. Yes. twenty-two years yes. in New York City, yes. <laughs> so that's a platform for really the United States. So, yes. so you, you are a separate subject. You don't have to. <laughs> provides a re repatriation because in essence it is a law of the land. They broke the law, the anti-immigration act of 1996 causes that kind of retroactive deportation. The situation where your crimes committed then can uh, 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 cause you to, to be deported. Um, so, so it comes up back to community-based organizations here, work with community-based organizations in Jamaica because it is not a situation where you're going to expect government intervention. Yes. The United States yes. says you're coming and break the law, this is yeah. what happens. That's the law. Yes. Yes. So until we change that law, it will happen. All right? And yes, the humanitarian situation, you don't know anybody back there. It's up to you, right? Yes. <laughs> is it? But we do have intervention groups, like I mentioned, um, whether it be the Salvation Army back home, Fury, um, um, other groups that help to help folks back into the city. Is it sufficient? No. Never sufficient. But at the same token, though, I think what groups here can do, and families, this is where it comes out downtown, and, and people, that's why I always encourage people, it's important to find an organization and become a member of it. Because when you have these kind of situations, you can at least have a community a organization, support a support base behind you. Yeah. So whether it be a church or something to sort, don't know, wait, Lord, have nobody to start running around. No. You're not going to get a support here. This, is, this country is not built like that. No, no yeah, one person is yeah. a matter. Yeah. You have to be part of something. Yeah. You have to be part of something. Thank you so much. We are a little bit out of time here. Um, is there, again, can you just repeat where your office is sure, located? Sure, 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 sure. We're located in um, 243, yes, is it 242-14 in Merrick Boulevard in Rosedale, Queens. But one thing I want to leave the, the, the group with here, uncensored, in a censored manner, uncensoredly, is this, that support our athletes. When our athletes do well in these in this country, we are happy as big and doing. All right, but not all that. It's an it's an Olympic year, and when you support an athlete coming up coming up here, it could be that athlete who makes it to represent his or her country. And we're talking about athletes from Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean. Yeah. So Team Jamaica Bip is an organization that supports our athletes, and we're asking for your support. Visit our website teamjamaicabip.org. That's teamjamaicabiku.org. Make a difference because when you do that, you are supporting an individual who will now become a global ambassador. Well said. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Clare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yes. Where are you from? I'm from America. <laughs> Right back. <laughs>
Hi and welcome back. Up next, we have in studio internet sensation Prince Charming and bad gal Die Die. And of course, you know the world wants to know, are they dating? So we're gonna be chopping it up. So I want you guys to just keep it where you have it. We'll be right back. Oh. You guys are doing skits together. You know, one day she saw one of my selfies. She's like, oh my god, he's so hot. I came up with the idea. And actually, like, before we became friends, I was like, ooh, this dude is like so corny, like, you know what I'm saying? But then. <laughs> mm. Then you broke him up. 